Hi guys, welcome to the Rule of Two, where the Star Wars news saga continues. I'm Terrence, and uh, I stayed up a little late for you guys today because I wanted to make sure that I did get a chance to talk about the first two premiere episodes of Ahsoka, the Disney Plus TV series. Last week, I did a video about my lowered expectations about what I thought I wanted and what I was probably going to get out of this show, and I'm happy to say that my expectations are super high now because this show actually really, really impressed me. At least the first two episodes then, because so did the Book of Boba Fett, and then the other episodes happened, and it, it kind of fell apart. But so far right now, I'm really excited for this show. Uh, one of the reasons why I'm really, really excited about this show is that because it jumps right into action. Dave Filoni wrote and directed this because obviously this is kind of like the successor show to the Rebel series. Uh, and that was his baby, so obviously he would want to get this kicked off as well as it possibly could. So he wrote and directed these two first episodes, and he did a great job because they jump right into action. And one of my best rules about anything, a new property, something I'm not familiar with, if you really want me to like it from the jump, you got to start killing people. And that's what they absolutely did in the first episode. They start off in kind of a Star Trek-esque bridge scene. And I know it's Star Wars, and it's kind of taboo to say Star Trek and Star Wars in the same sentence, or at least in the, definitely not in the same property. But look, that was Captain Kirk sitting on the bridge, talking to an unknown Klingon ship. <laughs> because we, at that point, we kind of get to meet our new dark Jedi, uh, a Balin Skull and a Shin Haiti, uh, which opened up such a great action scene. Uh, it gave you kind of a reminiscence of the corridor scene uh, where Vader was going down, just kind of chopping people up. They definitely just kind of run through the security team uh, on this ship. It was a great way to start to show off and set them up as our new antagonists, or at least a couple of our new antagonists anyway. Uh, the next thing that they did great about this is that they went into another action scene right after that because then we jump directly to find out where Ahsoka is and she's kind of continuing her mission from the Mandalorian. Uh, we last saw her when she took on Morgan Elsbeth and she defeated her. Uh, so now she is looking for a Guardians of the Galaxy Star War Star Lord S Quest to find a little round MacGuffin, which literally I felt like we went from Star Trek to Guardians of the Galaxy, uh, one scene after another. So maybe Dave Filoni is is watching other properties as well, not just Star Wars. Um, but when she finds this item, she comes out to a bunch of 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 uh, assassin droids, and the assassin droids and her have a great action scene. Look. I want a lot of the lore from Star Wars, and I know that there was a bunch of holes to be filled, and there was a lot of dialogue to kind of help fill those holes, but unless your name is Quentin Tarantino, I don't need you overburdening me with a bunch of dialogue stuff. We learned from the trade agreements and stuff. I, I just want to see action, and then you can kind of fill me in along the way, and that's what this show does, because right after that, after that pretty much amazing action scene, we kind of get to them filling in, where if you're a Rebels fan, this is kind of be the part where it really makes sense to you because it gives you a look at where everybody's at, uh, who's still working with Ahsoka, where is she still in contact with people from the original ship, uh, where is Sabine? We know what Sabine's doing at that particular point in time, and there is even kind of a little mini action sequence, which I would say would reference Civil War on that little bike chase scene with the Quinjet. Look, there, there's a lot of influences in this show. Oh, at least in this first episode. Now, again, I will say that if you are a big Rebels fan, I, I have seen another review going into this IGN where they were talking about the performances of um, Rosario Dawson and how she portrays a uh, Ahsoka Tano and how where the character in the, the cartoon uh, seemed a little bit more lively, the emotion came through a little bit more. I disagree with them as far as that this interpretation is a is is a less than interpretation of it. We are now further in the future. They were young. They were bright eyed. This is a little bit more of like, hey, I have a purpose. I'm a little bit older. I'm a little bit wiser and maybe a little bit more kind of jaded. So I do like the interpretations of these characters and they don't have to be cartoon s type personalities of those particular characters. Because that's not what this show is about. This is supposed to be a little bit more serious than what Rebels was. 
So, I mean, if you feel like that and you're a big Rebels fan, I understand why you may feel like that, but I think that you should give this an opportunity to see where these particular characters go. Plus, it's a little bit darker and a little bit more grittier. We want a little, our, we want the representation on screen to reflect that as well. Uh, but we're going to jump over to episode two. Episode two, once again, keeps giving us great action scenes. But I will say in episode two, they do more as far as setting up our full antagonist. Uh, I believe at the end of episode one, Morgan Elsbeth does get rec rescued by the Dark Jedi. Uh, and now she is free. So now she is now our prime bad guy at this point. And the Dark Jedi are kind of her minions to kind of help further her plot to kind of get with Ron. I don't know if that's not it right. But to meet up with Ron. But where the Dark Jedi kind of come off as Sith, we get to find out that they are also working with a... Uh, um, why am I forgetting the name right now? They are working with uh, an Inquisitor. There you go. Uh, I believe his name was Marak something like that uh so it's a great thing because i really i mean it's kind of been overdone where there's, there's a master and an apprentice and we're kind of going from that but now they have a master apprentice an inquisitor uh morgan elsbeth is some type of D uh darthamir witch look i feel like my knowledge of of star wars lore is not deep enough where they're going in this particular series uh but we got to see great scenes uh as far as them uh Spoiler alert, we almost thought Sabrina Wren died, uh, which was a shocker when it actually happened. Uh, but look, I, I, that's where I'm going to stop here because I feel like I'm just going to spoil it for everybody. The The show is doing a good job in these first two episodes to really get you hooked. Now, where they go from here is kind of anybody's guess. I'm not sure how many more episodes Dave Filoni either going to be writing or directing, but like I said, he did set the bar high as far as where they're going to take this show. I haven't really been excited about a a Disney Plus Star Wars series um, since The Mandalorian and Andor. Those are probably my favorite. Book of Boba Fett kind of fell short uh, and Obi-Wan kind of fell short. So I'm excited again for another Star Wars property. I might do a video in regards to how Star Wars is doing the Disney Plus series well and Marvel is not. But tell me your thoughts about it. I mean, I spoiled a little bit of it. So please tell me your thoughts in the comments below how you felt about the two premiere episodes of Ahsoka. And uh, I'm going to try to do this weekly. So we'll be back next week to at least talk about episode three and hopefully that they're still keeping everything going. So if this is the first time that you're on the channel. Make sure you subscribe as well as click the notification button. So that way you're aware of all the other videos that we do on the channel. And also too, you can go and grab some of our merch. Links will be in the description below. So with that being said, may the force be with you. Always. Wait, guys, are you still here? I'm glad you're still here. All right, so if you look now, I mean, it's somewhere over here. Look now, we actually have a Patreon. So if you guys watch the show and you really like what we want to do and you want to help support the show and you want to help me get an editor so I can get to sleep at night because I'm really tired and you guys see all my mistakes in the episodes. So please go to patreon.com forward slash the goods. Give us a penny, give us a nickel, give us a dollar. Tell Just us. don't give us the finger. Don't do that. But make sure you do donate something because we do have some giveaways. There's posters, there's t-shirts. There's I'll uh, sign something for you. Exactly. So uh, take a look, guys, and uh, help us out. We appreciate it.